Good afternoon, it is Wednesday, March 1st. On the last chess video, Trotters uh, UK, you said, as someone who knows next to nothing about chess, what is the best way to start to learn about this game? Love watching these videos and I'm inspired to try it out uh, myself. Trotters, thanks for the comment and to answer your question, you get better at this game by watching other people who are better than you play the game and listen, listening to what they have to say. Uh, a really good resource for that on YouTube is a guy named Chess Network. Jerry is a super nice guy, really good at the game, and really good at explaining uh, the basic fundamentals of chess. Savvy, you said, I found your channel through a chess stream you did with Tal. It's so strange seeing this kind of content on a big channel like this, but I love it so much. Keep, uh, keep Hope you keep it up. Maybe we can all achieve GM status with you. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, but I wish all the best of luck to you. And uh, I thank you for your comment. I'm glad you found the channel. I'm glad you dig what you saw. Uh, I can't, I mean, the fact that it, you don't really normally see like, the, um, these kind of videos on bigger channels, that's something I'm totally fine with. I've always been a fan of doing just kind of weird shit. So uh, I'm glad you dug it. Today's video is the last in a series that I did with Grandmaster Tal Baron uh, from Israel. If you haven't seen the other two, I will link both of them in the description. Uh, and this was, again, just such a fun series. I had such a good time playing with Tal. I'm in the process right now of setting up another time to play with him. And I'm setting up a time to play with uh, Eric Hansen from Chess Bras. So that's going to happen pretty soon, too. Uh, and yeah, speak up and let me know if you guys like what you're seeing. Uh, give me some in incentive to keep doing it. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay? All right. Bye-bye. Yes, you wiped him off the board without even noticing who he is. Okay, so... Now, let's do the same thing. Two questions. Yes. Go. And yeah, no threat, develop. Next move is probably Knight of Three. Okay, no threat. You can develop, right? Sure. And now, either get the bishop from C1 out uh, of the pawn chain okay. before playing E3 or play E3 immediately. Both are fine, Whatever. generally speaking, yeah. And uh, I have to stress, even though the moves we're playing are not perfect, we want to be good enough. This was uncalled for, by the way. <laughs> I like that. You, I like the way you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I I just I I sometimes like in coffee shop chess. I used to just think like if you have a bad bitch, just 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 exchange them off and just simplify. Well, this is not a way to treat a bitch. You know? <laughs> okay. I mean, the guy was doing his job, and you just uh, <laughs> got rid of him. <laughs> this was uncalled for, he says. <laughs> I was offended on behalf of the beast. Oh, man. Ah, oh, what's his rating now? 16, 13? Uh, Amateur hour. Amateur you're hour. You're highly rated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, um... so let's get uh, the beast out. All right. The one that you have left, I don't unfortunately. Want, I don't want to exchange him, though. Uh, you feel bad. Yeah, I don't want to exchange him. Okay. You feel like you mistreated one, so you want to <laughs> be nice to the other. So I should so, castle here, right? It's possible. But remember the principle that I talked about earlier? You can be a little bit flexible. All so right. what it. you will have for sure is an open C file. So queen d2 is good. And next move, you want to put a rook on the potential open file, as I said earlier. Okay, okay, all right, okay. And of course you can castle. I mean, it's not a bad move. I just want to be a little bit more flexible. Okay, all right. How much do you normally charge for... Do you, do you, do you give lessons? Have you ever charged people for lessons? Uh, I do, but uh, I have an interesting or unique uh, method I will explain later. Uh, first, no threat, right? So you can. Um, why don't I just? Your... Why don't I just make this file open? Why don't I just make it? Uh, it's possible, but there is no way for him to avoid it. So you can just develop. There is another principle. I'm glad you mentioned this move. Uh, after you will play your move, I'll say it. Nice. So another principle in chess, which is. Also in life, I think, which is about uh, when there is tension between two things, like these pawns, the first one to relieve the tension usually gives up something. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you don't want... Okay, but in this case, he moved twice with the same pawn, so it makes sense to open up the position because you're leading in development. 
plus you're gaining material. And by the way, uh, probably would prefer C takes D5 first, um, but because now it activates his knight for one move, but it doesn't make a big difference. After C takes D5, you just win a pawn, yeah, without exchanging anything. Yeah. But uh, so now you probably can expect him to take back with the knight, and then you want to just take on D5 and further open the position. Okay, I, so, can, I can do that. I can do that. So uh, as for teaching, uh, I like what they do in the East. At least that's what I think they do. And uh, which is like the main achievement for a student is not to have enough money to pay for a lesson. is to be accepted in the first place, to be a student. And I feel like... Uh, uh, I, the main goal for me is to improve my own chess. As I said, being a chess player is the main thing in my life. Almost the only thing. I want to be as good as I can. So while teaching, I also want to improve my own chess. So I focus on, only on, on very high levels. Yeah, that, and, makes, uh, that makes sense, huh? And uh, I mean, I hope if I will need money one day, I'll, I might lower the bar. But for as long as I can, I will continue to... Um, you know, to live the good life, as they say. I got this pawn with tempo. Yeah. <clears throat> tempo on the queen, nice. Um, if I could. All right, all right. We got some interesting stuff. I th feel like I want to. Okay. I feel Be like careful I now, uh, because notice that we are quite. Uh, quick and uh, and now we want to be quite a little bit methodical. So okay, he has no threat. He has no threat for now. Okay, maybe ninety four is kind of a big threat attacking your queen, but I, it's not. Uh, so it's not threatening to capture anything. And of course, castling is a good move in general, but then he will castle also. And yeah, this is a good move exactly. Another option, by the way, was to play bishop b5 check and, and prevent him from his right to castle. And bishop bishop then... b5. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, looked, I looked at that, too. Um, but he could have just moved his knight back to, to, to block that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but uh, I have to mention that then he moves backwards and you move forward, so... It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I never see. I don't. I don't even think in those terms on playing on my. Well, own. this is the only term I think. You move backwards, forward. He moves backwards. You're you're better. That's yeah. it. But we, we but want then, to progress. But then it also goes back to what we were talking about with Petrosian earlier, where like some people like like prefer to play defensively to like be on the, on the uh, uh to be going backwards and just wait for their opponents to make some kind of a mistake. But I guess as a rule of thumb, it's generally better to push forward then, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a matter of st statistics, I think, because uh, when you're in the center, not necessarily all the way up the board, when you're in the center, then you're attacking all in all directions, and then you're just statistically threatening more squares, so there is more chance for you to, to get something, to grab something. So now no threat, so let's continue our development finally, or at least finish it. Uh, you mean castle? Uh, um yeah yeah and by the way if he has no threat on the next move you want to uh develop the last last piece to an open file right yeah yeah i got you so i'll, I'll and, put uh, my, my rook f rook uh, my f rook to to d1 yeah and um right now uh i can safely say that at least from an objective point of view white's position is winning so what is what it means is that as long as you don't rush, not you play prophylactically. Not, not only better, but you're saying winning. Already winning. It's your pawn up, and all your pieces are more active. Great so, news. This is great news. Yeah. So the the key now is to ask yourself the questions once again, and not to rush, not on the clock, and not on the board. Well, I like, I like your idea before of getting that rook on that file. So I think I'm going to stick with that plan. Yeah. Yeah. Bringing another piece to the game is just uh, very powerful. 
no other piece that moves twice can co can compete with that because it was it wasn't there earlier. Now you have like six pieces threatening things. It doesn't even matter if you see all the threats or not; they are there. And now, by the way, uh, as I was saying, there are some threats that you had, and he kind of uh, ignored uh, yours, and you can exploit the fact that you have the queen and rook on the open file. Okay. Do you see that the bishop on d6 is kind of hanging? Yeah, but I'm like, would I just sacrifice my knight here and just hit him with a check? So you, you have both options. Sacrifice is on, on f6 and ruin his structure, or on b6 and capture a pawn. Both are fine. It's a matter of taste. But as long as you exploit the, the fact that his bishop is hanging... Yeah, and that would mess up his pawn structure a little bit. I like yeah. it. I like it. I'm going to yeah. do it. I'm going to do it. And I'm glad you chose this one because, um, you know, one is gaining like a strategical advantage and the other one is gaining a pawn, right? Yeah. Knight takes b6. And I think that, uh, as I said, my idol, Mikhail Tal, and many chess players uh, prefer to have these kind of uh, advantages. Okay, but let's focus. He's threatening your, your rook. And it was also pinning your, your bishop on the c-file. So you need to be very careful. You need to address both of these things in one move. It's not easy. I mean, it looks easy now that you've done it, but it's very easy to miss. <laughs> it's very easy to miss. So uh, again, he has a semi-threat. Do you see it? Okay, it's a big threat, it, but... Um... I don't see it. Okay. Uh, it's related to the fact that your bishop is hanging. Yes. So, so just... what you want to do is either defend the bishop or blockade the d file. So both options are, are fine. And, uh, well, I like the moves that come with tempo. So do you see a move with tempo that can block the d file? That can block the d file. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do. I do. Nice, nice. Right, right. So you, you take a knight from f3, you bring it closer to the center, improving a piece with tempo. I mean, this is just as good as it gets. It's a sexual move, Tal. It's a sexual move. Exactly, exactly. You Look, you have a pawn up, you have a better structure, and you're a master of prophylaxis. <laughs> oh, man, you are good for my ego. <laughs> uh... I was talking to myself. So, so why don't I just um, offer him a trade here? Um, it's possible, but you're moving backwards, my friend. Shit. It's not bad, but it's just on principle. I want you to get used to um, moving forward on every single move. So he wasn't threatening anything. So improving the bishop was a good idea. So you could offer the trade while, while moving to a6, for example. Ah, oh, okay, okay, yeah. And... Um, yeah. The same idea, but I kind of, but, but I kind of like that that bishop on that diagonal against his. Well, oh, well, I guess he's got a bishop defending that down there. I mean, it's a good move. Don't get me wrong. It's just on principle. I'm very happy with uh, this. Okay, let's focus on on improving our position. You don't have to trade because it will stay there. The tension remains. You don't have to release it. You want to bring your king to the center because it's an end game. And. Um, King f1 is possible, but I prefer to oh. kind of... Exactly. I mean, why am I even talking? You just, <laughs> just give me the, give me a little hint. Just give me a little hint. I'll find it. I'll find it. Yeah. Maybe I'll just say, like, it's your move, and you'll just play the move. <laughs> yeah, he's got... He, you know, he probably will go to, to, to C, C, C5 there, right? And then... Yeah, yeah, you're already doing it uh, naturally. You want to uh, predict his moves. That's good. And after knight c5, you don't want to let him exchange a knight for a bish because, okay, first he exchanged. As I mentioned earlier, releasing the tension is in your favor. Of course, you have to take back with the rook. And now, yes, now he's kind of strategically threatening to exchange a knight for a rook, uh, for a bishop, sorry. So you don't want to allow it. So I, I think a good idea would be to retreat with the bishop. And uh, of course, it's moving backwards a little bit, but it has a good uh, 
intention behind it. You see the move, nice. So we don't want to capture the bishop on g6 and fix his pawn chain. We just want to be educated. Let's say he's running on e3. You defend while bringing the king while closer bringing to the, the king center. to the center because it's important like, to do that during the end game. Be careful now. Okay. If you take with the knight, he has knight e3, forking the king and rook. Well, we don't want that. So you have to take it back with the rook. Nice. And by the way, it was enough to just not go backwards. This is <laughs> you didn't even have to see it. Right. As long as you keep moving forward, the uh, life will be good. Okay. Now again, he's trying to trick you with some knight ideas, some checks. But uh, it's not gonna work on so, me, man. Purple exactly. axis, bro. Master of prophylaxis, you move the king away from the checks while and bringing him closer the center. to the center. Yes, tall. Yes. All right. I am so excited. Okay. Look at this. Now he's in trouble. Okay. Do you see the key oh, move yeah. now? Yeah, he's in trouble. Exactly. I, I mean, why am I even here? <laughs> You're fired, Tal. I don't tall. get it. I don't get it. I think you should be paying me to tutor me. Because exactly. it's, like, it's like you said, I feel like I'm going to make your chess game so much stronger. No, but this is not even a joke. I mean, I feel like what we're doing here, we're not talking about chess moves. I'm not teaching you chess. I'm, it's like, it feels like a lesson in philosophy <laughs> of chess. And like... I'm Plato and you're Aristotle, I think is what would be an appropriate, exactly. an appropriate comparison here. Definitely. Most deaf. Basically, you can call me dad. All right, let's fucking go. We're doing great. Might as well take All that, right. huh? Don't rush. That's the only advice I'll give you. No, no, no. We're good. I'm not rushing. Okay, careful. He wants to do something, yeah? He does, but I'm thinking prophylactically. So Exactly. So you don't care that he gives the check. You just want to avoid losing a pawn on A2. So you yeah. can just move forward as you like, as we are learning here. Moving forward constantly. And uh, this is a great move. I was thinking of a4. Both are fine, but it's just as long as you, as I said, as you play a decent move, it's good enough. So again, he's checking you. Okay. I could have nice. pushed. I could have pushed up this, there, huh? No, no, you don't want to give a pawn. Now you can move a pawn forward, right? On a4 or a3. Both are fine. I like your style. You want the pawn to go to the queening square. Once again, he's attacking the pawn. You don't need to rush. You can just move forward. Everything is protected. Another example of a move that Petrosian will play next is like h4. He doesn't have any particular threat. You just keep grabbing space, completely torturing him. By the way, uh, Bobby Fischer was asked once, what's your favorite moment or experience in chess? And he was saying like, to see the hope dying in my opponent's yeah, eyes. I re yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah. To see the hope fading away. So no threat, once again. He has no threats. So which piece can you improve with one move? OK. I was thinking of rook c7, but uh, it doesn't matter. You're, you exchange pawns, but the pawn you're grabbing is much, much more valuable. So you see, the, you see the guy, yeah. And then just have to be careful not to lose the A pawn. But if you slowly march it up, it's going to be game over. So let's bring the knight back to the center. Knights on, I'm learning some English here. Knights on the rim are grim, a right? Knight, a knight on the rim is grim, yeah. Oh, on the rim is grim. OK. Um... So no threats. And then, uh, OK, you want to. Uh, improve your position a little bit, right? Yes. You don't have to force anything. So why don't we just go with the pawn to f4 and king to f3? No particular idea. Just to improve the position without any threats. You can get the king there, closer to the center. And now, by the way, you have a nice move if you can spot it. it get, it's related to bringing your pieces closer to the center. Um, is that check with a knight any good or no? Um, if it were good, why would it be good? Ah, uh, because I'm protecting. Ah, oh, it is good. Boom. Yeah, exactly. And uh, well, now it's like dominoes. These girls fall like dominoes. Hey, look at you. Oh wait, look wait, at wait. You. Nice. look at you. Nice. Oh, Tal, we're doing great, Tal. 
We're doing fantastic. I, I wanted to tell you to wait and think about the nice move, and you already played it. I mean, uh, I, I'm so inconsistent with this game, though. Like, tomorrow, like if I tried to hop on chess tonight, I mm -hmm. I would be blundering left and right, but this time if I if I play chess tonight, I'm gonna have your voice in my head asking, "Does he have any threats? How can mm -hmm. you improve your position?" That's all I ask for. Well, that's all you're gonna get. Nice. That sounded aggressive, but it was actually A prophylactic. <laughs> yeah. Pro <suggestion>. Prophylactic. <laughs> I think it's too many syllables. I think it needs to be shorter. Yeah. 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 How are you supposed to compete with Facebook and Flickr? And Twitter, yeah, yeah. when you got prophylactic friendship, I just don't think it works. Well, maybe it's an exclusive club. <laughs> so um, get the pieces out. Nice. Okay. I'm and not gonna. To... I'm not gonna take him this time. You, if if you behave well with the bish, the bish will treat you well. <laughs> <sighs> now you want to get the knight and the pawn out, and not. To release the tension, unless you have to. But normally you don't have to do anything in chess. You just want to play decent moves. You heard it from Tal. Normally you don't have to do anything in chess. Uh, so yes. I guess I guess we like this, right? You're not forced to do anything uh, in most of cases. Yeah. Now he's threatening your bish. You don't want to exchange it. It's not a bad bish. So how do I? You well, just feel like go. Just... You just go somewhere. Yeah, this is a good square. H four was a good square. But he's gonna. He's if he wants. To, if he wanted to, he can take this bishop with the knight. He... Yeah. Well, now, now by the way, this... now there is an idea that I want to suggest: okay. developing while protecting the bishop, but don't play it yet. Just tell me what move you're thinking of. Queen to f three. You want to develop the light pieces first. Knight to e2. This is blocking the f1 bishop. So what do you have left? I don't know. Knight to h3. Yeah. But 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 I don't like that yeah. move. I know you don't, but this is a like a very flexible move, and it will like normally the knight is bad on h3, but there is some tension going on. So sooner or later he will be forced to allow. The exchange. Okay, all right. Do you want to do you want to do you want to explain to casual? Maybe I have some casual viewers why a knight on the rim is normally grim. Yeah, uh, it's just as I said earlier, a matter of statistics. The knight from h3 is only threatening four squares, and normally a knight on the center is threatening eight different squares. So it's just basically if he's threatening twice the amount of squares, then he's just a better piece. That's all there is to it. I should probably castle here, huh? Yeah, yeah. Huh? And um, we were not saying it out loud, but I'm sure everyone, even at home, are thinking, like, what is it threatening? Which piece doesn't work? Yeah. I, I don't like his position at all. You see, this move knight h3 is one of those things I mentioned earlier, annoying your opponent. Because by not forcing anything, you kind of give him a lot of choice. And this choice is troubling because many of his options are bad well, so, so my instincts right now tell me to push the c pawn for some reason but i don't know if that's, that's well he's you see because he has a lot of choice he's forcing the, the the matter and this is easy for you just lead by development so you capture you open the center yeah just have to be aware that his bishop on c8 wants to grab your knight that's the only idea he has so probably you want to exchange and get the knight uh, back to the center. And by the way, if it takes on c4 on the next move, you have a very nice tactic. Do you see it? First, let's deal with the east threat. Bishop takes h3 is the idea. OK, now if d takes c4, do you see this idea, this motive? Yes, I do. That would be terrible for him, huh? I would get his queen. Yeah. I would get his queen. Exactly. And by the way, uh, if you don't notice it instantly, um, referring to the viewers, just asking yourself if he has any hanging pieces can help. Okay, he's, he has a threat, right? Yeah, but I, I want to keep my threat. 
Oh, this this is a nasty move. I see what you did there. You're kind of luring him to win a piece by taking on c4, but you have something up your sleeve. I don't think he's gonna go for it though. But yeah, but he saw it. But I'll just mention quickly that you could have gone to b3 with a tempo on the pawn on b7. Just a tempo is even better than than this great move. I could have gone. To, I could have gone to b3. With the queen, a move earlier, and have a tempo on the pawn on b7. Oh. But it's just uh, it's all in the past. So well, this this now he, this knight this knight is annoying me. So I okay, but be careful. Now he has a threat. D takes c4 is a huge threat. You have to deal with it, and preferably with tempo. Preferably with tempo, eh? I'm not, I don't. So he wants to take your pawn. When they come to, to, to get you, you want to get them first, right? No, I don't know. I mean, he wants to take you. You can, you can just take him before he does it. And uh, well, this, like you prevented his idea um, while gaining a move. Okay. So right. okay. this is one of these exceptions where you're releasing the tension even though it's strategically bad, but this time it's tactically a good idea, right? Just dealing with his uh, threat. He did. He did um, improve his position a lot in the in the last few few moves here. He got his bishop. Yeah. He got his bishop out, developing his pieces. His knight's not yeah. really awesome on the a file, but he can just jump yeah. over to jump over to c c five at any time here. He's a really good player. If you didn't notice, he's uh, extremely high rated. I mean, for for this tournament. And, yeah, uh, yeah, 1965. If you guys can't. I mean, see you're talking it. about these guys as if like uh, they deserve compliments for de developing their pieces. They're almost uh, world champions already. Uh, so now I okay, feel so like now, I'm te I'm tempted just to double up his pawns and just fucking snatch that knight. What do you think? I think that temptation is not always good, and we want to ask ourselves if he has a threat. He um. Well, maybe he wants to push that pawn and, and, and bust that center open, maybe? Well, it's a logical move for him. But before he does, you can continue your development with tempo. But in this case, I'm a little bit sneaky because developing is not only getting the rook. I consider a window for your king as part of your development. So if you could do it with tempo, then uh, all that, the better for you. Is that what you had in mind? Yes. All right. H3. Okay. And uh, those are the kind of moves that get to them because now is like getting uncoordinated with his pieces. Because if he gets the bishop to e6, which is probably the most logical square, then his rook is a little bit annoyed or misplaced on e5. That's true. And if he moves somewhere else, then like the bish will be sad. <laughs> So I feel like yeah, that's an annoying and, that's an annoying move, huh? And the only reason I came up with this move is not because I calculated the bishop will be bad. I just wanted to develop with tempo. Okay, and now this is you have a pleasant choice. But first, does he have a threat? Um, not immediately. Just besides exchanging these bishops, put the rook either rook on either rook open file, and you'll be doing awesome. And either one on either one, huh? All right. Yeah, but I prefer, of course, something that that's more active because one of them creates a pin. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And uh, I just want to mention that these kind of moves that don't threaten anything but improve your position are the most annoying to deal with, just because you're not threatening anything and your position improves. He, he simply. It's not easy for him to, to respond because he has nothing to respond to. He can't react to anything. He has to come up with a good move of his own, but this is much more difficult in chess. Yeah, I like my position here. I gotta tell you. So, yeah, so you see how you were tempted to take his knight? Even though it's good for you strategically, it makes his life much easier because he can just capture back and then put a rook on the file and attack your b2 pawn, like yeah. put a rook on b8. His life will be easier, even though both moves might be equal in strength. 
if you don't threat uh, or don't force the uh, the situation, then even the 1900s will fall like dominoes. Yeah, I'm repeating myself, but I I don't know if there is a better word. For no, no, no. That that house of cards that could work too. Yeah, fall like cards maybe. Uh. Okay, all right. Okay. Knight d3. I should leave my Thank knight. You. My knight. My knight on f4 is good, so I want to leave him there. Oh yeah, yeah, but. Both are actually good, but I, I like the idea of uh, of gaining a tempo on the rook. But I also like what you just said, because you're implementing already what I said earlier. You don't want to force the position, and you don't want to go backwards. So, yeah. But, but, then, he, like... but, but then he's probably just going to swing in there with his knight to boot me off that square. Yeah, but let, let's do it, because there's no reason anything should be bad for us if we... Uh, improve our position. Just be careful. I have to be uh, careful here because knight, because I yeah because if he now if he attacks by going to knight b4 and I go up to d4 with my queen, then he can fork me. So I got yeah, it. but his rook is hanging, so this is a oh, yeah, yeah. okay okay. So, so um, these kind of small predictions are very important, uh, as I said, especially in blitz and. Uh, well, even in, if he plays knight c5, queen d4 will attack both pieces. So you see queen takes d3 that you suggested. I wanted to take with the knight. You play the other move. And it's more... Maybe both are fine, but this one doesn't force the position. And there are two immediate consequences. First one is thinks, which is good for you. And the second one, you, there's a very high chance you will make a mistake. Either now or later, because it just cannot play when when nothing is forced it's so much so what so, so what's my just general goal right now with this position like not not short-term tactics but what's my long-term strategy if i'm like if i'm thinking about how to keep the position the way it is or improve it what what am i what are my goals here okay first no threat so what is the piece that you can improve my rook you see you just need to ask the right question at the right time. By the way, when you're more advanced, there are more questions that you can ask. But as long as you master these two, it's like wax on and wax off. So the questions are, what are my, what's my opponent's threat? And then what's the second question? Which is the worst placed piece? Or which piece can I improve uh, the, the most with one move? So I like to rephrase it, which is my worst placed piece? Why don't, um, why don't I just... Why don't I take take that? Wait, here? careful! Your queen is on the way. You will be the last one capturing, but you will lose your queen in the process. So it's about. probably a good idea to ask yourself if he has a threat, and if not, think of a way to improve your position. And as I said, all your pieces are in good squares, and it's not easy to keep improving. And I'll suggest a move that Petrosian might have played here. It's not necessarily a great move, but just to pass the move to him and see what happens. You can go a3. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Amazing. Why am I, why am I ruining the experience for you by by no, reading no, no, your I'm mind? Just, no, I'm just, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I, that's a good, that's a, that's a nice little waiting move. Give him the ro rope exactly. to hang himself with. Yeah. And by the way, I don't know why, but I like in my head these kind of moves, h3 and a3. Are associated with the Russian culture because many Russian players they make these moves. And it's so difficult to handle uh, over the board, at Wait, least in like, you, throughout my career. You were you were born in uh, Israel, right, or were you born in Russia? Yes, yes. I'm. I think I'm almost the only Israeli who's not speaking Russian among the top players. So um, again, no threat. You can continue the same idea of grabbing space on the queen side, and uh, without threatening anything. And these two moves are very high class because you really don't do anything, but I am a classy son of a bitch, Tal. Exactly, exactly. And uh, as long as he has the move, you see, you're, you'll probably win by time, the way this is going. As long as you don't uh, force the position. And uh, unless, of course, you can gain material. But, okay, now, he has a threat. He wants to ruin your pawn structure, right? Yep. And uh, his rook is a little bit misplaced. So you could do something that I wouldn't recommend normally. Okay. It's just to fall back with the knight. And there is a reasoning behind it. I'll explain after oh, you yeah, play it. I think I get you. I think I understand. Knight back to the center. 
And the reasoning is, even though I'm moving backwards, uh, we have more space. Do you agree? Yes. And when you have more space, one of the principles in chess is not to exchange pieces because it's just like he has an apartment with one room. So it's much more difficult for him if five people live there than if four people live in this one room. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't want to exchange uh, if possible. And uh, this is a typical move for Petrosian, as uh, we mentioned earlier. It looks like he's going backwards, but in fact, his opponent is feeling like he's getting squeezed. Okay, now there is. There, you have to be a little bit careful. He has no threat, but uh, you you don't want to make mistakes here. So we want to keep improving our pieces somehow. So I feel like the knight on e2 is the worst placed piece in your position. So maybe you can somehow bring it closer to the center. But I thought I didn't want to exchange. I agree. I agree. But in this particular uh, move order, I'll, I'll show you later. Just make it first because I want to to preserve the time situation. Um, I agree. But in now that he played knight e4, his d5 pawn is a little bit loose. And if he takes on d4, just I feel like tactically... It's good for you. Oh, now rook c3, queen takes d4, of course. Yep, you yep, want yep, to yep, have yep. an isolated pawn. And you're attacking a7. And he did manage to release some of the tension. But, okay, now you can just uh, get the pawn, right? But he, he still has a weakness on d5. Earlier, there was no way to exchange the knights... Uh, Okay, now you don't want to take. You don't want to take because then the d5 pawn will not be weak anymore. So you want to just move the rook and uh, the d5 pawn will remain weak for as long as we uh, control it. We don't want to let him push to d4. So, again, just ask yourself if he has a threat. No threat. Yes. Well, well he, he, I, no, yeah, no, no threat, no threat, no threat. Oh, I, what if I um, offer him an, an exchange here? Um, there's no need. There's no need. I feel like you just have to think if he has a threat. If he doesn't, you can bring your, your queen back to the center. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking here. Should I ex... No, I shouldn't. All right, I'm going to do that. Many people think that when you are you have a, a material advantage, you want to force uh, exchanges, but it's not true. You just want to improve your pieces, and the exchanges will happen naturally. What if, what if I push push uh, e4 here? That would be lovely. I'm going to do it. And also, indirectly protecting f2, which might be weak. So, yeah, now, now you can... Now I can take with my queen, right? Both are fine. I like with the pawn, I did but... It. Uh, I mean, it's not bad, but... All right, now he's got, a, he's got a threat. He's got a threat. He's got a threat. Okay, so now you can protect it while threatening the exchange of queens or exchange of rooks. Both are fine. Okay, now you can also improve your position while threatening his queen. Do you see it? Yes. I'm not yes. sure it's the best move, but... Uh, actually, you know what? You know what? How about... Just you. I can just take his pawn, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was considering. I, I want just making sure it's not losing anything. Okay, so we don't have too much time, but he's suffering even more. Okay, so he has a threat. He does. You can you can exchange. I, I guess it's uh, it shouldn't be bad for you. And he will take back. Now he has a huge threat. You have to respond. I do. But you don't want to be too passive. So if you can defend with the queen, it will be ideal. And there are several ways to do it. This is uh, probably the best one. Another idea, by the way, was queen b8 check earlier. But you don't... Okay, now you're so much up in material, you can afford the exchange of queens even if you ruin your pawn structure, yeah? Three pawns are a lot, and he, of course he doesn't want to. And now um, he has no threat once again. So I like to, what I said earlier, I want to play g3 and king g2, just slowly improving my position. Yeah, I, al I, al I almost made a real stupid move right there, to be honest. Yeah. Um... So you can go, okay, g4 was weakening your king. I want to play g3, but it's fine. Just play king g2. 
Well, I was looking at this move. We don't have. This is fine, but just be careful with the time. He's threatening the f2 pawn. You have to go back probably. Now you can go one square to the right, protecting everything, or two squares to the right. Doesn't matter. And again, you can mate him now, but that's another story. Now, okay, put the rook behind the pawns. Yep. You know how to do it? Yep. And now you can just push. And don't lose the B pawn. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Why? And, and bring the king to the center. Okay, okay. All right, I'm doing it. Yeah, you can bring the king all the way to the center. No need to be afraid. But 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 my you pawn. You can also move the pawn first. Move the pawn F4 uh. quickly. And now bring the king to the center. Not a lot of time. King C1. Take the rook. He pre-moved. Yeah, and now just push the pawns. Okay. Don't repeat the position. Rook, move the rook. Yeah. Nice. This yes, was, so! This was probably the most exciting day, game I've ever seen in my life. Nice, <laughs> Tal. Oh, that was fun. <laughs>